I'm going to cover the process to do a complete oil change and fluid service on all Harley Davidson Sportsters built from 1954 through 1978. For Sportsters built from 1979 through 1985, the process is basically the same, but the engine oil tank and engine oil filter locations may be different. I'm going to be changing the engine oil and the engine oil filter, as well as the transmission fluid and the primary fluid. I'm going to start here on the right side of the bike and change the engine oil and the engine oil filter, and then we'll go around to the left side of the bike and change the primary fluid and the transmission fluid. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down and show the drain plug location for the engine oil tank as well as the engine oil filter location. The engine oil tank is right here on the right side of the bike and on the bottom of the tank right here there's a 5 8 inch plug that will drain the engine oil that's in the tank and then in the top of the tank under this chrome cap is the location for the oil filter. And the oil filter will just lift out. On some bikes it will be a paper element inside a removable canister and in other bikes like this one you'll find a single unit that's a metal canister with an integrated paper filter and you replace this whole unit. I'll show an example of each style and I'll put part numbers for those down in the description. Right now I'm going to put the camera back up and we'll drain the fluid and I'll go over that process. We're ready to drain the engine oil tank. You want to make sure you can run the engine for at least five minutes before you drain the oil tank. If you can take the bike out for a 15 or 20 minute ride, that's even better. But at least run the engine for five minutes. The reason is the Sportster engine is a dry sump engine, which means when the engine is running, the oil pump is scavenging the oil out of the crankcase and pumping it into the oil tank. But if the motorcycle sits for a period of time, the oil in the tank can seep down into the crankcase. So if you drain the oil from the tank without running the bike first, you may be leaving old oil in the crankcase, which means when you refill the tank with fresh oil and then start the engine after the oil change, the oil pump is going to pump the oil in the crankcase up into the oil tank and overfill it and make a mess all over your floor. I'm going to go ahead and remove the old oil filter. You want to get some kind of a container to catch the oil filter when you remove it because it's going to be partially full of oil and it'll make a mess. Now I'm going to cut a jug that I can use as a trough to get the oil out of the tank and into the oil catch pan without getting oil all over the bike. Now I'm going to use a 5 8 inch wrench to remove the oil plug from the bottom of the oil tank. I'm just going to loosen the plug and then I'll remove it with my fingers. Once the oil tank is finished draining, we're going to clean and reinstall the plug with a new copper washer and then we'll fill the tank 
initially with two quarts of engine oil and then after we've run the engine we'll add up to another quart until we get the engine oil tank to the full level. Okay, the engine oil has finished draining, so we're going to reinstall the plug. I'm going to put a little Teflon paste on the threads, and this will prevent oil seepage, and it will also prevent the plug from backing out due to vibration. It doesn't take much just to skim coating around the threads. And then we're just going to snug that down. We're going to start by adding two quarts of 20W50 engine oil to the tank. I'm running Mobile One 20W50 full synthetic, and uh, this is specifically formulated for V twin engines. You'll want to get an oil that specifies that it's formulated for V twin engines or four cycle engines or air cooled engines, something to that extent, to indicate that it has the correct friction modifiers for a motorcycle engine. We'll top that off by adding up to another quart after we've had a chance to start the engine. I'm going to install the oil filter now and I'll show the two different types that will fit this application. This is the original factory oil filter and it's just a canister that slides down into a container inside the oil tank. And this is the unit type that has the canister and the container as one unit. You can see the size difference. Alright, we've changed the engine oil and we've changed the engine oil filter and now we're going to go around to the other side of the bike and we'll change the transmission fluid and the primary fluid. To locate the drain plug for the transmission and the primary, start at the foot peg on the left side of the bike and then go behind it and underneath. And the drain plug is located right here. The filler location for the transmission in the primary is located above and in front of the foot peg. I'm going to put the camera back up and we'll drain and replace the transmission and primary fluid. The first thing we want to do is remove the filler port plug on the primary so that will allow air into the primary after we remove the drain plug. <clears throat> they make a tool that fits this plug to remove it and I'll leave a part number for that in the video description but uh, there's various ways to make a tool to fit that 
If you have a piece of flat stock metal and a bench grinder, you can grind a piece of metal to fit the recess in the plug. Uh, I've just got an old crescent wrench that I filed down the thickness of the handle to be correct to fit the plug. With the plug removed, we can go ahead and remove the drain plug from the bottom of the primary and allow it to drain. After the primary and transmission have finished draining, we'll clean and reinstall the drain plug with a new copper crush washer and a little bit of Teflon paste on the threads. And then we'll add 24 ounces of 20W50 to the transmission in the primary. The transmission in the primary finished draining and I reinstalled the plug with a little bit of Teflon paste on the threads. The plug is going into an aluminum case. so you want to be gentle when you're snugging that down. Uh, just a little past finger tight really is all it needs to be if you've got the Teflon paste on the threads that should prevent it from backing out from vibration if you snug it up. If you torque it down too tightly you're going to risk stripping the threads out of the aluminum engine case which would require cutting new threads for a larger bolt and you don't want to do that. Now we're going to add 24 ounces of 20W50 to the primary and the transmission. The filler hole is at a challenging angle to add the fluid without making a mess. The best way I've found is uh, if you have a plastic container with a long neck, uh, like an old oil bottle or an old, in this case it's a heat bottle, a uh, gasoline additive bottle, you can cut the side out and then uh, that makes a container with a spout to add the fluid. We're going to be running the same oil that we ran in the engine in the transmission in the primary. For Ironhead Sportsters built before 1977, there's a crossover vent port that allows fluid exchange between the primary and the transmission and the engine. So if you run a different fluid in the primary and transmission, it will actually mix over time with the engine oil. So you don't want to do that. I'm going to leave 8 ounces in the bottle. A 1 quart bottle holds 32 ounces and we only need to add 24 ounces to the primary. So if you leave 8 ounces in the bottle you'll have the correct amount. The other option is below the shifter or the brake there is a, an overflow plug and you can remove that plug and if the bike is on center you can just add fluid until it starts to run out that overflow plug. That's really not necessary, uh, but some people like the added insurance of knowing exactly how much fluid they have in the primary. After the fluid is drained out of your funnel, you can remove the funnel and install your access cover plug. I'll tighten that down with a wrench and then we'll be ready to start the bike and warm it up and recheck the oil level in the engine oil tank. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions about the process or comments, uh, leave those down in the comment section. And if this information was helpful, leave a like for the video and we'll catch you next time.